Sat Ame reads, I'm Teresa Garcia, or Amehana Arashi. Today's reading for you is The Will, a Han Folk Tale, out of Louise and Yuan C. Kuo's collection of Chinese folk tales. The Will In ancient times, worship of heaven, earth, and the ancestors was very important. The desire for male posterity arose from the practice of ancestral worship, whereby the male head of a family performed the rituals. When he died, the eldest son, or a male next of kin, took his place. If there was only a married daughter, her husband assumed this responsibility and was treated like a son, if he seemed devoted to the family. In that case, property, money, or worldly goods were bequeathed to him. There was much scheming and many tragic incidents as a result. Although the baby in this story was called Tai, Big is the eldest, his middle name Fa, not a negative, indicated he was physically small. A Chinese had a number of names besides the given name, a milk name as an infant, a school name on first attending school, another on reaching manhood, one for scholarship, a professional name, a retirement name, etc. Practicing law became a modern profession only after lengthy contact with the West. Prior to that, a magistrate controlled law and order. Some were notorious for being corrupt and lacking in wisdom. Others were upright and sagacious, as in this tale. The play on words and elimination of punctuation in the old man's will enabled the son-in-law to interpret it in his favor. The astute magistrate prevented what would have been a miscarriage of justice. There was once a rich man, over seventy years of age, living in Chang Chao. He had only a daughter who helped manage his affairs. After she married, her husband managed the old man's properties. At first, his son-in-law took good care of the old man, but his attitude gradually changed to indifference. At times, he treated the old man very badly. One day, Old man Chang thought to himself, after all, a son-in-law is an outsider. Besides, he has his own parents to consider. Naturally, he would be inclined to protect the interests of his immediate family above all. Although I'm elderly, I'm still strong. Why not marry a second time? I might have a son, and in that case, the Chang lineage would be continued. A matchmaker was sent to a family in a nearby village. They consented to the marriage, and a wedding was subsequently arranged. Shortly afterwards, his wife actually bore a baby boy. The old man's daughter and his son-in-law were very upset. But after all, what could they do? Old Chang was truly a happy man. A big celebration was held according to custom when the child was one month and given a name. He was named Chang Tai Fei, Chang Big Not, but was known by his milk name, Chang Tai. Chang Big, or the eldest son of Chang. Time passed quickly, and after two years old Chang became seriously ill. Knowing that his end was near, he wrote two wills. The first was given privately to his wife, and he coached her thus. I realize that my son-in-law is lacking in filial devotion. With my ancestors' blessings, you, my wife, gave me a son, thereby ensuring the continuity of the Chang family. I'm leaving my property entirely to you. However, our son is only three years old. As soon as a baby was born, he was considered a year old. And since you're an illiterate woman, I'm afraid that my son-in-law will take advantage of you. It may seem as though my properties are being given to him. But wait until our son comes of age. Then go immediately to a righteous magistrate. Declare your legal status and claim the properties. Always remember the child's given name is Chang big knot. That is of utmost importance. She carefully hid the will, and then the old man had his son-in-law called to his deathbed to give him a will. I've treated you well, he said. Hereafter you must look after your mother-in-law and her baby son. Don't make any trouble for them. Promise me that so I'll be able to die in peace. Yes, yes, the son-in-law said respectfully, taking the will. But since character writing has no system of capitalization, and old Chang had omitted punctuation, the son-in-law interpreted the will according to his own wishful thinking and read, Chang big, not my son, 
to whom all property belongs son-in-law, outsider, forbidden inheritance. This pleased him, and for a time he was most considerate of his mother-in-law and the child. But gradually, he neglected them. The years quickly elapsed, and the young boy was now of age. The mother remembered her husband's last words in the will, so she brought her son with the will to a righteous magistrate to claim the properties. The son-in-law was not worried over the contest of the old man's will, because he believed that he possessed the will, and he promptly presented it to the magistrate. The handwriting was indisputably the old man's. Yet the neighbors said that the will was unfair, since the old man had written it when very ill, already not in control of his faculties. Nonetheless, it was a legal document, so the magistrate scrutinized it without saying a word, and did likewise with the will presented by the second wife. After examining them both and hearing the neighbors' explanations, he felt that something was wrong with the son-in-law's will, and pondered the matter for some time. What is the name of your father-in-law's son? he asked the son-in-law. Chang Big, he answered. Everyone knows him by that name and calls him that. What is the name of your son? the magistrate asked the mother. His name is Chang Big Not. Chang Big is his milk name. Have you heard what was said? Is this statement correct? he asked the son-in-law. The son-in-law was thinking that everybody called the baby by the milk name of Chang Big, but his true given name was Chang Big Not, so he nodded in agreement. With that, the magistrate openly declared before the son-in-law, the daughter, the mother, all the relatives and neighbors present, Old Man Chang was very clever. If the will had not been written in this manner, all the property would belong to his son-in-law. Something unfortunate might even have happened to the mother and son. This will was purposefully written without punctuation. Thereupon he gave the proper punctuation to the will and officially declared it in order. A given name must be used in all legal documents. Then he read aloud, Chang Big Not, my son, to whom all the properties belong. Son-in-law, outsider, forbidden inheritance. The hidden meaning was thus revealed. Everyone praised the fairness of the magistrate and the wisdom of old Chang. And that was the will. Now, what lessons can we take from this short story? Well, we can take away, first of all, the usual of um, step families not always being quite happy and sometimes rather danger fraught. We can also take into account the importance of wordplay in ancient Chinese writings and lore. The punctuation, or lack thereof, was quite important, and the proper use of names was also quite important. Now, this would not work with every name, so the naming of the son was quite clever indeed, and I don't know if that would actually be a very common occurrence. What else can we take from this tale? Perhaps the necessity of being a dutiful mate and listening to the will of one significant other. Also, the importance of the Confucian filial piety in taking care of one's family. What things of import can you take from this story? Until next time, happy reading.